A great tool in Microsoft Word is the ability to do a mail merge. What a mail merge does, it allows you to take a list of information, maybe a list of customers or people's names, for example, and then merge that together with a letter in Microsoft Word. This video shows you how you take a Microsoft Word table that holds information about people's first name, their last name, their city, their street address, and so on, and uses that list to create for ourselves a whole bunch of letters in Microsoft Word. A valuable tool that you can find really useful, I think, in your, in your job or, or in your career. I hope that you enjoyed today's video on how you do a mail merge in Microsoft Word 2010. I'm in a blank document in Microsoft Word 2010 and I want to use this as a starting point for demonstrating how you do a mail merge using a table from Microsoft Word. Now before I actually do the mail merge, I want you to see the source of information I'll be using for doing the, uh, the, the mail merge. In this case, I'm a, I already have a document open and the document I'll be using is this one here with a table in it. Now this the document has different columns of information in it. The first column, for example, I've called it the Sal column, short form for salutation, or I can see it's either doctor, Mr., Mrs., and so on. The first column, people's first names, their last name, their street address, their city, their province, and their postal code. So I'm going to use this as, again as my basis or my starting point for creating a mail merge and using Word 2010. I'm going to close off this document. Okay, the name of this file is called Merge Source. Close off the document. I'm now back to my blank document. Doing a mail merge is really an important skill in Microsoft Word. And what this allows you to do is to produce a whole bunch of letters or labels for people. So to start a mail merge, I'm going to go to the Mailings tab above the ribbon and click. And then on the left-hand side of the ribbon, I'll click on Start Mail Merge. And I have choices. I could do a letter, which I'll do in this example here. I could also do an email. I could do an envelope, for example, or I could do a label. So I'll click on Letters. Now it takes me back to my document. There's no indication that Microsoft Word got that first signal to what I want to do, but I just have to assume that it understands I want to do a letter. I'm now going to go to the next button on the ribbon. It says Select Recipients. I'll click on that. Now I could either type a brand new list, and all Microsoft Word would do is help me build a table. I could use an existing list, list which I'll be using in this case. I'll be using the file that I just showed you called Mail Merge. It has a table of information I'll use it for doing the mail merge. Or the third option would be I could draw from, my, from Microsoft Outlook's contacts in order to do a mail merge. I'm going to click on Use Existing List. It takes me into a window. And in this window, I now got to, I've got to now navigate to find the location that I'm looking for that holds that file that has those people's names in it. And once I find it, I'm going to find the file I just showed you a minute or two ago called Merge Source. I'll click on it once, click on open, and that's not, that's not open in the background. Now, don't, I don't actually see the document, but I, if I want to see the list of people that were in that document, I can go to edit recipient list up on the ribbon and click on that, and it shows me the seven people that were in that table. Now, if I had 7,000 people in that table, I'd, I'd be seeing 7,000 people here in front of me. Now, if for some reason I didn't want to send a letter out to any of these people, all I would do is, is remove the check mark next to their name. But in this case, I'm going to be doing a letter to all the people. So I'll go all the check marks in, and I'll click on OK. What I want to do now is I want to build an inside address for these letters. So I'll take my mouse up to the ribbon, and I'll look for the button that says Insert Merge Field. I'll click on that. I get a drop-down list, and it shows me the first row of information that was in the table. That's why it's important that you understand the first row is your indication as to what you're going to be putting into your letter. It's not important in Microsoft Word, but you have to understand in this example that Sal represents salutation, first represents their first name, and so on. So I'll click on Sal. That'll put a field in for me that will eventually will say Dr. or Mr., for example. I'll put a space in. I'll go Insert Merge Field. I'll click on First. That'll put the person's first name in. Put another space. Insert Merge Field. And click on Last. I'll touch Enter on my keyboard to move to the next line of the inside address. I'll click on Insert Merge Field again. And click on street and put their street address in and touch enter insert merge field i'll click on city i'll type a comma and a space insert merge field province and enter and finally insert merge field and postal and that will eventually give me the inside address of people from that table i'll touch enter twice on my keyboard to move down a couple of lines i'll type in the word dear I want this to have their first name in, so it might say Dear Barb or Dear Linda or Dear Joe, for example. I'll go back up the end of the arrow part of Insert Merge Field and click on First. That will eventually put their first name in. I'll put a comma in, and I'll touch Enter a couple of times. I'm going to do a little bit of typing. And 
the idea here is you want to sort of sprinkle the name periodically, periodically through the letter so it looks like you did it just for them. So, so far I've taken this invitation to, I'm not going to go back to the insert merge field, click on sound, put a space in, insert merge field, click on first, put a space in, and insert merge field, and click on last. This will eventually say, for example, this is an invitation to Dr. Bob Burns, and I'll put a space in, and I'll type in to our open house, and I'll put in a period. I'd be, I would, in a normal case, I'd put in a lot more content into the letter. I eventually I'd go, yours truly, and so on, and my letter will be finished. Now, I'm not quite finished the entire process of doing a mail merge. The next step that I go through is taking a look to see a couple of letters to see what they look like. So to take a, a preview of it, I go up to the ribbon, and I click on the button that says preview results, and it shows me the first letter for the first person from the table. It shows down here how it sort of sprinkled the name throughout the document. Now, I made a mistake on here. I want to go back and make a change to it. So I'll go up to preview results again. Go back to where I built the mail merge. And I should have put in here, and a guest to our open house. I'll go back to preview results again, and I can now see what the letter looks like. Now, when I do this, I take a look at a couple of letters, make sure that they're, that they're reading properly. So I'll go up to the ribbon again to the recipient area. There's a record counter. I'll go to the right point arrow. There's the second person the third person, and so on. And what it did here was it drew all of the people's information from the table that I showed you at the start of this video, and it inserted their names into the letter. I'm now going to move across and finish this process off by going to Finish and Merge. Now I could, if I chose to, print off the document. In this case, I'm going to go to Edit Individual Documents. If I go through this step here, it gives me one extra chance to see the letters before I actually send them off to the printer. I'm going to pr produce all the letters. I'll click on OK. And what it quickly does, it produces for me seven letters. If I had 7,000 7, people, it would have produced 7,000 letters. And these letters are all customized for the people's, the people's information that was in that table. I'll just scroll down the letters. There's your second letter, third letter, fourth letter, and so on. And they're all customized to put the people's information into the letter. At this stage, if I was happy with everything, I would go to File and Print. Now, I'm not going to actually send this off to the printer, but the last step would be is to click on the print button to send those off to the printer. Instead, I'll just uh, it's going to leave it as it is. Now, I have two documents open right now, one called Letters 1. Now, if I chose to, I could save that document. Underneath it, there's another document where I actually did the mail merging, and I might save this so I can use this in the future for next year's open house. Again, doing a mail merge in Microsoft Word is actually a simple process now, and this video demonstrated to you the process of creating a letter. Wow, that's powerful stuff, being able to do a mail merge in Microsoft Word 2010. I hope that you enjoyed it and I can find some way to, to use this in your job or in your career. We have lots of other wonderful, valuable tips on our videos on our website. Our website is www.joecomputertips.com. Please come to our website on a regular basis. We post brand new videos on there every week. I think you'll find lots of things that are interesting on the site for you to, to learn from. My name again is Joe Peterson. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video on doing a mail merge in Microsoft Word.